Good evening. Welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Richard Ayuadi. In the news this week, an employee at a car wash in Aberdeen struggles to contain his frustration after a heated argument with his boss. <laughs> On day two of COP26, no one tells Prince Charles that Joe Biden is having another quick nap at the edge of the stage. <laughs> This frustration as one pub quiz team struggles to remember just how many members there were in S Club 7. <laughs> <laughs> on Paul's team tonight is a writer and comedian who doesn't own a mobile phone. He was meant to be on last series, but when the messenger pigeon arrived, he was out at Jazzercise. <laughs> Please welcome Andy Hamilton. On Ian's team tonight is a comedian who says everything's funny eventually. It just takes time. <laughs> now, I think there's more to it. There's more to it. Please welcome Roisin Conaty. <laughs> we begin with the bigger news stories of the week. Paul and Andy, have a look at this. Yeah. Oh, minute to midnight. Yeah. The Edinburgh Fringe starting early. Yeah. <laughs> Bucks Fizz have let themselves Yeah, go. they haven't, they? <laughs> oh, let's all give each other COVID. Yeah, go. <laughs> Bolsonaro on his day off. <laughs> <laughs> What's he doing there? I think that's a gesture he, he kept labouring this. It's about keeping 1.5 alive. So the right hand is one yep. and the left hand is five. And he's the decimal point in the middle. He is. <laughs> At last we found a point to Boris Johnson. Isn't that nice? <laughs> <laughs> this is a continuing struggle to save the world. What's the score according to Boris Johnson? He said we're 5-1 down. And it's at half time. Oh, at half time. Yes. But now. even though it's half time, it's one minute to midnight. Yeah. He doesn't make any sense, no. does he? <laughs> he said we were five one down at half time, but now I think we might have pulled one back <laughs> or two back. <laughs> yeah. Yes. This is not to be confused with the COVID nineteen pandemic, where according to Professor Jonathan Van Tam, I would say we're kind of half time in extra time, and we've got a few more months to run, and I think we'll be in much calmer waters by spring. <laughs> Uh, That's a hell of a long football match, yes. that is. It is a lot of spring. Yeah. Fantastic. He said that at the Mixed Metaphor Championships. <laughs> uh, yeah. Do we need metaphors to explain the situation to us? No, and if they spent more time on arguing about the detail and less on the metaphors, I think we'd probably get closer to the argument. Yeah. I mean, I would like to see them introduce metaphors into football results. <laughs> West Bromwich Albion, deforestation. <laughs> <laughs> Nottingham Forest, not as much as he used to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you for that, that desultory ripple of applause. <laughs> no, no. Those three there. No. It's, it's moments like that first applause that keep me going as a performer. <laughs> and the second round of applause was just plain patronising. <laughs> I thank you for both of them because I know they were well met. I thought that Boris Johnson, you know, in the chair in that first speech, did as good a job as you could reasonably expect, given that he faced the insurmountable problem of his own personality. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because he... I got the same round of applause as Nottingham Forest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that was just... That was more kind... That wasn't... Oh, it might be an echo from my applause. <laughs> <laughs> Boris Johnson always reverts to that sort of that favourite persona that he's got, which is, which is that of a sort of children's party entertainer. <laughs> Mr Fisty Pump. That's not just a children's entertainer. <laughs> <laughs> and that was actually on the Tory expenses scandal. <laughs> yeah, but he ended up uh, sort of taking the line that sort of like tackling climate change can be fun and we're all going to get rich because of green technologies. And he thought he really hasn't read the room. You know, the, the delegates looked bewildered. And he thought, hasn't read the brief. He hasn't read yeah. anything, Anne. I know. <laughs> and then the UN chief came on and said, we are digging our own graves. And everyone went, oh, that's more like it. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we came for. Yeah. But why does Boris Johnson think the situation is improving? 
Well, there were a couple of agreements. Anyone in particular that... Uh, did he like the methane one? Oh, he flipping loved that one. <laughs> he was not party to the methane agreement. Um, uh, India, China, China. Russia. Russia. Russia and China. But apart from them, everybody. <laughs> yeah. um, the deal on methane emissions is known as the methane pledge. Can we all take that pledge now? Yeah. <laughs> um, there's an after party coming up, and I think it's the end of the evening. <laughs> <laughs> we all know the methane Don't pledge. Don't look at me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, you're refusing to take the pledge, so... <laughs> we went into the COP thinking carbon dioxide's the thing that's really important. And then halfway through they say, oh, methane. Now, that's the gas you've really got to worry about. And everyone's thinking, what, what, what happened to carbon dioxide? Um, well, with the methane, it's relatively easy to sort out and will only bring global temperatures down by a 0.1 degrees Celsius. Here's what Greta Thunberg and her mates made of that. You can shove your climate crisis up your arse. <laughs> you can shove your climate crisis up your arse. You can shove your climate crisis. You can shove your climate crisis. You can shove your climate crisis up your arse. You see that? That is the thing about the Swedes. Their standard of English is really high. <laughs> Shoving the climate crisis up your ass isn't going to help the methane thing. <laughs> I will. Plug <laughs> it. Yeah, plug it, yeah. <laughs> the methane pledge was largely the work of President Joe Biden and his team. How has Joe been enjoying the conference? Um, a he... lot of rest. Yeah, yes. has he been sleeping a bit? He's been copping some Zs. Do you want to see it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thing of when you haven't acknowledged that you're going to take a nap and that thing where he's, he's doing everything they're sort of like I'm just resting my eyes yes. he's got the whole like he's trying to I think he thinks he's still listening like he, he's he would be better if he hadn't said that COP26 was an important wake up call to the <laughs> <laughs> he briefly woke up but it was amazing how quickly he managed to get back to sleep <laughs> he wasn't the only one caught sleeping our prime minister yes. was yep he was doting next to 95 year old <laughs> Sir David Attenborough <laughs> God, there's been hundreds of people who've woken up looking at that. Yeah. <laughs> we got there in the end. Good. <laughs> He's not still there when they wake up. <laughs> Why have some climate activists and the more sceptical minded been criticising the conference? How they travelled there? Yes, exactly. Um, they point out that many of those attending are guilty of hypocrisy because of the methods of transport they use to get to Glasgow. One person commented, Boris's carbon footprint is as big as his big, fat, lying, <laughs> hypocrite face. <laughs> Come on, Charles, we've all had a drink. Yeah. <laughs> he, he topped it off when he flew home. From Glasgow to London? Yeah, and, and he took a private jet. Because he had to be back to go to dinner in the Garrick Club, with Charles Moore, who he made a lord. And incidentally, he's a great defender of Owen Paterson. I, don't, I know we don't want to jump ahead. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to get on to this disgraceful <laughs> act of criminality by this government, but... <laughs> um, All of them taking private jets there is like driving a tank to an anti-gun march. It's crazy. <laughs> it's like very elite and it's like we can, you know, that's sort of the whole reason why we're in this problem is we're all bloated on convenience and the idea is, oh, it's more convenient to, you know, yeah, that's why we order too much stuff and it's all, that's the whole problem is that we all are, like things to be convenient. <laughs> it wasn't just Boris, was it? I mean, Prince Charles, mm. he's a great champion of sustainability and he went to COP26 which coincidentally is the number of palaces that the royal family had. <laughs> and many of them are not used uh, for much of the year except as safe houses for Prince Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he also flew down to London on a private flight. He could at least have catched a lift in Boris's private flight, didn't he? I mean, who does the PR for these people? O.J. Simpson or something? <laughs> <laughs> All sorts of powerful people in Glasgow, did you spot? Bezos Jeff there. Bezos. He was there. How did he excuse his recent joyride in a rocket? He took William Shatner. Yes. He said, seeing the Earth from space made me realise how <laughs> fragile it is. <laughs> how else could he have realised that? Leonardo DiCaprio was there and he made a big thing about flying commercial. Yes. 
but you're like, he can't write any legislation. Like, what? He could just zoom in. He doesn't need to be there at all. Yes. He's very interested in protecting the children of the future and uh, girlfriends of the future. <laughs> <laughs> Many of whom have yet to be conceived. <laughs> What has Joe Biden got 21 of? Sounds like a Christmas cracker joke. Uh, oh, <laughs> was that the cars in his convoy? Yes, cars in his motorcade. Why so many? What's in his... What's in... What's in Joe's motorcade? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I know his beast... Yeah. Um, ..does eight miles to the gallon. Yeah. So maybe they're bringing all the petrol in the... Yeah, a lot of it's just fuel tanks. <laughs> Press men, security guards, British security forces a hoist. We don't know what that hoist is for. <laughs> that's Joe's business. <laughs> a commode? Maybe that's what the hoist is for. <laughs> a commode? Who's not going to let the president use the loo? He needs a commode. <laughs> and there are two presidential limos. One is a decoy and the other has his big comfy bed and toys in. <laughs> what happened to President Biden's motorcade? What special welcome did he receive? Oh, he, they got flashed by a naked Scotsman. That's right. Although, how they could, how how do they we could know tell he was Scots definitely a Scotsman? I don't know. Yeah, I was going to say, how do you know he's naked? Was he playing the bagpipes? Yeah. He was? Yeah. Oh, he well, was. there we are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's fully Well, according to the BBC's John Sopel, a large Scottish man flashed at Joe Biden's motorcade <laughs> while taking a picture of it on his phone. What's the it in that sentence? Yes. Yeah. Um, the beast. <laughs> um, how did German artist Arndt Drossel get to Glasgow from his home in Paderborn? Was it on a bicycle-powered... He did power it himself. He did power it himself. But not via bicycle. You're going to have to see it. OK. OK. okay. <laughs> oh, wow. I just made it a lot more difficult for himself. Yeah. He's going to mow down these two children. <laughs> <laughs> he stopped it. Look, oh that's natural God. selection. If they can't get out of that way... <laughs> this isn't transport. He's not moving fast. He could be running quicker yeah. if he wasn't inside a great big metal ball. How no. far did he go in that? Well, I'll show you the route. That's where, obviously, there's a... The channel yeah. bit would have been interesting. <laughs> <laughs> there's an obvious flaw in this plan. <laughs> he was going so fast that he just skimmed across it like a stone. Maybe. Yeah. The Zimbabweans really enjoyed themselves at COP26. Mm -hmm. Oh, is this their shopping trip? Yes. Do you want to see the Zimbabwean delegation leaving Costco? Yeah. Please. Yeah. We are ready to welcoming our friends and comrades to Nangaro in Scotland, UK. COP26, we are ready. Gala celebrations, we are ready. We are ready. We welcome you. We celebrate your arrival. Thank you. Viva Zambia, viva. We're delighted at the value they're getting. Yes. According to the Metro, their trolley contained a dozen bottles of whiskey, several crates of lager <laughs> and gallons of fizzy wine. Or, as they call it in Glasgow, Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> this is the continuing struggle to save the world. Around 400 private jets flew into Glasgow for the climate summit. However, most leaders managed to offset the huge amount of hypocrisy generated by their flight with the purchase of hypocrisy credits. The scheme uses cutting-edge insincerity capturing technology, which traps a young wanted cynicism and converts it into harmless humbug. <laughs> <laughs> this week, there was an alarming sight for those in Joe Biden's motorcade when they drove past the window of a house and realised they were being watched by a large, naked Scottish man <laughs> and examined. Clearly missing frontline politics. <laughs> Ian and Roisin, take a look at this. Money seems to be being paid to an MP to to oh, it's Owen Paterson. Here we are. <sighs> yes, he's explaining why he's innocent. This won't take long. The food company that he was lobbying for. Angela Rayner, who gave him hell in the Commons. And that's Ian Duncan Donuts. <laughs> <laughs> One of the sillier members of the Conservative Party, and this is John Whittingdale. Oh, and here's a screeching U-turn. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is the attempt by the government to cover up the misdeeds of one of their own Tory MPs and to undermine democracy, transparency and accountability. And they failed, uh, due to the fact that it was so bloody blatant um, <laughs> that even they didn't get away with it. So there's a man called Owen Paterson, who was paid 100000 a year to lobby on behalf of two companies. He did. The Commissioner for Standards <laughs> looked into him, found he was guilty, said, you did it. 
He said, I didn't do it. It wasn't me. I haven't had a chance to plead my case. He had. It's absolutely unbelievably uh, clear cut. And then all his Tory mates started a campaign and the Prime Minister said, oh, right, we're changing the entire system now. He was going to be suspended for 30 days. They said, no, he's not. And all the Tory MPs voted it through. I mean, they should all be ashamed of themselves. It's absolutely disgraceful. I mean, a few others, Peter Bottomley and a, a few other Tory MPs didn't. But basically, they said, if you criticise us, we're going to change the system. I mean, it was really quite shocking. Yeah. Um, and, and the thing is... The I'm looking for the joke, and it's... <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, like, the same, like, to rig the system, he, Owen Patterson got found guilty of egregious offences. Egregious? It's such a good word. And <laughs> all that was going to happen to him was he got a 30-day suspension. Yeah. That's it. 30-day suspension, a, 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 maybe a by-election, but, I mean, think of all the consultancy work he could have done in those 30 days. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted, I think, because the, the parliamentary commissioner for standards had looked into the prime minister's free holiday in Mustique. So I think it might have been an act of revenge. I can't prove that, but I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> but I suppose it, it was inevitable that Boris Johnson would, would be hostile towards the Commissioner for Standards, because the clue is in the name. <laughs> <laughs> Usually when the Parliamentary Standards Committee looks into something like, is Pretty Patel a bully? The answer, yes, of course she is. Um, <laughs> Then the Prime Minister says, I've read the report and I'm going to ignore it because I'm the Prime Minister. This time he said, I'm going to abolish you. I'm going to abolish the entire <laughs> system. Um, and I think he might have gone too far. Owen received more than £100,000 from two companies, including Lynn's Country Foods, a company who claimed to be the country's leading sausage maker, <laughs> and Randox Laboratories, a clinical testing firm who later went on to win a COVID-19 testing contract. Mm, unopposed. Yes, with the government. Um, I, I think I'm literally the only person who hasn't had one of these contracts. <laughs> I, I, I'm joking, I do have one. <laughs> <laughs> what did Owen Patterson say when he resigned? Oh, he's leaving the cruel world of politics. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's right. He said, I will remain a public servant, but outside the cruel world of politics. We wanted him to be a public servant when he was in the world of politics. <laughs> but he wasn't. He was a paid advocate for two commercial firms. Oh, please. Yeah. To, to give more transparency, it seems to me the way to do it is that all MPs should have to wear the name of their sponsors on their shirts. Like... <laughs> great idea. Like... Like football. Or... Or a sort of jokey badge that says, I am Serco's bitch, or something like that. <laughs> I want to know, what did he do for this sausage company? How did he keep... <laughs> what didn't he do for this sausage family? Speeches <laughs> in the House of Commons, I'd like to draw the right honourable friend's attention to sausages! <laughs> <laughs> Patterson said that the system was unfair as he didn't get a right of appeal and despite a two-year investigation, he claimed that the Commissioner had refused to interview 17 key witnesses who would support his claims that the meetings he is accused of lobbying in were actually used to raise concerns about food safety. I just improvised that. <laughs> OK, but what are the proposed reforms? Whoever bids the most money represents them in Parliament. That'd be a very good game show. <laughs> <laughs> well, they've said cases should be reviewed by a new committee chaired by John Whittingdale. Yes, who in fell foul of the old standards committee, so why not appoint someone who's already been found guilty yeah. by the previous lot? What yes. was he guilty of last time? He didn't declare a visit to a record industry do in which he took along a dominatrix. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, that's the sort of thing that could slip your mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he might have been struck for cash. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he wasn't punished, which must have been a big disappointment. <laughs> Oh, yes. Well, there are people on Owen's side. Yes. Who are they? The excellent Jacob Rees-Mogg. <laughs> He's one. But there are, there are three in particular I'm thinking of. Ian Duncan Smith. Yes, that's three. That's three, yeah. Yep. Ian Duncan and Smith. Yep. <laughs> John Burke and Marc Francois. What do they all have in common? They all look like they're made out of pastry. <laughs> they have all been found guilty of breaches by the Commission. Marc Francois broke the code with his use of parliamentary stationery. We don't know how he used it. That's his business. <laughs> what has Boris Johnson done? I mean, that's a big question. What has he done? <laughs> He's done a, a huge U-turn. Yes. 
Yes, it's They back. act like we couldn't see. This is what I don't understand. They, they, everyone was watching. We could see this happening. It was all over the news. And, and then they sort of get surprised that we know. And then they sort of go, oh, they know. And they're not, oh, OK, we'll change it then. <laughs> well, Boris Johnson has backed the vote against Parliamentary Standards Commissioner Catherine Stone, who, according to The Telegraph, launched an investigation in 2019 into the funding of Boris Johnson's holiday in Mustique. And also his wife, Carrie, was previously an advisor to Owen Paterson. Oh. oh, come on, you're so suspicious. <laughs> Quasi Quateng was asked by Nick Robinson on the Today programme about the timing of the proposed reforms. Did you hear? Did you hear yes, that? but I'd like to hear it again. Let us hear it once more. We've been discussing this for years. It's quite wrong to say that this only came uh, uh, out of the blue yesterday. We've been talking about this, these sorts of processes for, for well, all the time since I've been in the House, and that's how, 11 and a half years. How long years. is that? 11 and a half years. How, half how long years, have we yeah. had a Conservative government? Uh, we've had a Conservative government uh, for uh, six years. So, uh, so well, since 2010, really, you've that. had a Conservative you know, Prime you know Minister. The to that. Well, I know the answer, and the reason I put the question to you is you say that you've been thinking about doing this for years, and it's a, a just about process. It's a bit odd, isn't it, that the first time you think of doing anything about it is when a former Cabinet colleague, the former boss of the Prime Minister's wife, is found guilty of the most egregious breach of the rules. Go on. That, that's just BBC bias, isn't it? <laughs> In other news, what was Boris Johnson doing at Hull Crown Court this week? Was he arrested? <laughs> you really cheered up there. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry, I suddenly got very excited. <laughs> oh, I know what he was doing. He was looking for new members of the Cabinet. <laughs> Scouring the jails. <laughs> seeing if there's anyone left. He wasn't there. It was his doppelganger. No, he's doppelganger, that's his brother. <laughs> in fact, he looks a bit like Boris Becker. He does. Yeah. Oh, my God, he's Boris Squared. Yeah. <laughs> They're both shaggers who've gone bankrupt. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That was too far. Too far, Ian. <laughs> I, I agree. I, <laughs> I, I think I should be referred to some sort of commissioner. For... <laughs> Why has Boris Johnson been spotted on the floor this week? <laughs> Too much wine? Well, there's an answer, and it's visual. Go on, then. Go on, then. <laughs> that is made out of hair. What, human hair? <laughs> yeah, human hair. Do you want to know more about how this happened? I don't know. Where's it going? Who's it meant to be? It's meant to be Boris. Oh! If I'm honest with you, Richard, yeah. I didn't immediately no. see Boris no. there. Well, take it up with Davinia Fox, who made this. Um, she's a hairdresser and wanted to thank the PM for the way he dealt with the pandemic. She told the BBC, I had well over half a black sack of hair, which I very carefully swept up without my clients knowing. <laughs> Obviously, it will be swept up, but I would really love it if Boris Johnson could actually see the photograph of it, or if he could come down to see it in person. <laughs> that would be lovely. I think you should go. <laughs> <laughs> this is the news that Boris Johnson has forced through a vote to reform standards at Westminster following the suspension of Tory MP Owen Paterson, who was found to have breached the parliamentary code over his work for Randox and Lynn's Country Foods. Owen Paterson claimed he wasn't actually lobbying on behalf of these companies. He was raising concerns about milk and bacon standards which is ironic because he milked the system and now he wants to save his own bacon. <laughs> In other news, Barclays banker Jess Staley has been forced to step down due to his links with Jeffrey Epstein. According to The Times financier, Staley will leave with a payoff of £2.4 million, £120,000 in pension contributions and costs to relocate to the US. And let that be a lesson to you. <laughs> So at the end of that round, two points each. Two points each. What on earth is that? I do my improp work. Yeah. And so now, yeah, yes, to round two. Yeah. The human dynamo of news. Wow. wow. That's right. I'm going to be powering up the pictures with my own energy. 
using this arm bike. That's what it's called, an arm um, bike. Blimey. I see you've got a bulb there. What's the purpose of that? This is just for the show. I'm, I'm not actually making enough power. There's a man under the table who's just switching it on. <laughs> but the point is, I'm going to give it a go. Right, I'm right. this, not okay. the man. He's safe. <laughs> Fingers on buzzers. Yeah. Here's the first one. Presumably, this is the war with us and France over yes. fishing rights. That's what it is. Can I ask, what is the sitch with the fish? <laughs> the sitch with the fish. I'm using street talk, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> it's a phony war. Phony war between Britain and France, which suits both parties very well, because Macron's got an election coming up, and the first rule of British politics is, if in trouble, annoy the French. <laughs> France alleges that the UK is withholding permits for French boats to fish in British waters, and they're demanding that more permits are approved. So then the French just um, took a, took the scallop boat. Is that what happened? So they said, you didn't give us a... Yep. And then they pulled a boat in. A, a British boat? It's and actually owned by Canadians, but it's sort of somewhere down the line it's become Scottish, British. Anyway, they've let them go. Those scallops would be off. We've been accused of not giving the French enough licences to fish in our waters, though, if any of them can drive a truck, they're very welcome to get an HGV licence. <laughs> Speaking of which, Dominic Raab's got a great idea of how to solve the HGV shortage. Do you know what it is? Convicts. Yes, that's right. Let's have a look at the clip. Government's Justice Secretary, driven by a prisoner. <laughs> Dominic Raab today highlighting a scheme where <laughs> convicts are helping with the HGV crisis. Behind the wheel was Dean. He's on day release from jail, working in haulage. His offence was importing drugs involving a lorry. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> In the front of that lorry was missing one letter. It said D-A-F. It should be D-A-F-T. I mean, that is just... <laughs> Really? What is going on? Things are now being done purely for comic effect. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this trust has been quite gung-ho about the fish war, though. Uh, but what else has she been offering up this week? Oh, I can't wait. I can't <laughs> wait. After her offering... performance with cheese and... Well, I bet cheese is available at the thing she's hosting. She has been hosting Fizz with Liz. <laughs> Champagne social to network with other female MPs. Uh, not to be outdone, Rishi Sunak has bought the entire Champagne region. <laughs> um, bonus question for balance. What does Keir Starmer eat for breakfast? Shredded wheat. Jeremy Corbyn. <laughs> Fish, of course. Fish. But what with? Mackerel. Knife and fork. Fish slice. <laughs> this is the weirdest auction I've been in. <laughs> he... Yeah? ..eats fish with cheese and fruit salad. That's a heck of a business breakfast. Well, that might, but there might be some for someone else there. Yeah. Maybe, uh, yeah. Why is he putting the cheese on top of the fish then, if it's for someone else? Think about it, Andy. You're out yeah, of you your don't mind. get anyone else's breath. So what is it set again? Fish, cheese, cheese and fruit salad. salad. He's salad. not as ashamed of it as you seem to think he should be. No. <laughs> Speaking of conflicts between France and Britain, uh, what recent Napoleonic artefact was sold last week? Not the wallpaper that was supposed to have poisoned him or, or anything like that. Yeah, still available at Liberty. <laughs> and no, it was one of his signature hats. Or, as the son put it, Battle of Waterloo loser. <laughs> <laughs> Sold for £160,000 yesterday. <laughs> yeah. You lost. You lost, mate. <laughs> Beat you. <ya>. Losers. <laughs> Who won the war? <laughs> we did at Waterloo. <laughs> it's what they said. In other news, President Biden visited the Pope last week in Rome. Lots of people noticed someone behaving very differently. Who is that? Ah, Wayne Rooney. Yes. Oh. Yes. <laughs> is that what happens when Biden goes around? He finds the Pope having a chat with Wayne. It wasn't Wayne Rooney. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I totally believed you. I, the news site was so insane. <laughs> no, that, I, that sounded totally believable. I, I wanted. Yeah, it, I realised when you said it that I wanted it to be Wayne Rooney. Yeah. yeah. So I just went along with it. <laughs> Someone turned over during that, but they've gone to the pub and gone, I saw it on Apple. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It was the Pope's translator compared to how she was animated when Trump visited. Let's let's compare and contrast. <laughs> I'm, I'm the only Irishman you've ever met. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. <laughs>
65, I'm 60. That's not how I look at it. <laughs> one hell of a poker player. <laughs> Fingers on buzzers, teams. Here's the next one. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yes. This is a terrible indictment of the standard of ornithology in New Zealand because their Bird of the Year contest yeah. was won by a bat. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely right. The long-tailed bat, otherwise known as the Pekka Pekka Tura, <laughs> has been named as New Zealand's Bird of the Year in the most divisive vote since Gareth versus Will in 2001. I'm reading this out. I don't know what it refers to. <laughs> Who are Gareth and Will? <laughs> Gareth Gates and Will Young. Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's a... Why do they... <laughs> do you want to see how conservation organisation Forest and Bird announced the bat's win? Yeah. I appreciate it's a leading question. Please. Here we go. That's, that's half an hour in Photoshop well spent. <laughs> and Adam's genitals are respectfully covered with a decapitated greenfinch. Wait, that's a joke. That's not their real thing. That's, we've done that, right? No, 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 no. Huh, that's you a... haven't seen this programme before. <laughs> the standard of that graphic is phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you saw the fish with the baguette. Yeah. You could only dream of this. This is like... This is like Avatar. <laughs> This is the worst. It looks like a drug induced nightmare. There's like a man with a pigeon's head. Yeah. It's horrible. I mean, what does a bird have to do to win Bird of the Year? Yeah. I mean, what sort of special efforts do they make knowing they're in this competition? Finest plumage? Biggest egg laid? <laughs> they have to talk about how they'd achieve world peace. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> There's a bikini contest. Yeah. Oh, yes. Swimwear section, yeah. How did the bat get into the contest for birds? I think it's an online vote, and I think in previous years, people have tried to rig it. I think, I think there was a year when lots of Australians voted for the shag. That is true. Essentially, um, the bat was given special dispensation to enter the competition, because the bat's got to fill out the form. Yeah. Um, in a bid to raise the profile of the critically endangered species, but critics saw the entry as a PR exercise to revive the image of bats. Remember when everyone loved bats? <laughs> and what was the reaction from the public? Outrage. Fury. I'm the public. They were cheesed <laughs> off. One commentator said, what a farce, bird of the year, my <laughs> <laughs> In other news, <laughs> Who wants to see my favourite Australian clip of the moment? Yes, please. Yes, please. Go on, then. Brittany Bramble walks out of court a free woman... <laughs> ..to <laughs> see the relief on her face. Yeah. That sounded painful. Yeah. <laughs> Fingers on buzzers. <laughs> oh! It's not getting easier. No. Yes. This is a man who's hypnotised a veal chop. <laughs> yeah. In Argentina, Buenos Aires, he's hypnotised a veal chop in to be able to sing uh, Judy Garland songs. I've forgotten his name. Yeah, do you know? But he does a steak chopping. Yes. What's his...? Salt Bay. Salt Bay, that's it. Yes. It's like six, seven hundred pounds, and he comes over and he brings you some steak, and then he sort of goes like that. Yeah. He's a chef, otherwise known as Nosret Gotche who became an internet meme in 2017 for his unique salting style. <laughs> 700 pounds, please. Yeah. You're telling you me that became salt. an internet sensation? Yeah. yeah. Is there not much on the internet? <laughs> Do you know what bay means, Ian? It's a sort of area of water, usually. Right. <laughs> Before anyone else. Does he do pepper with the other arm? <laughs> Don't trivialise <laughs> what Salt Bay does, OK? How many reviews do you think Salt Bay's been getting? Not enough chips. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's been getting some bad reviews for his gold leaf steak. It comes in at around £850. Yeah, next morning you're shitting ingots. <laughs> <laughs> Reality TV star Gemma Collins, she recently made a trip to the restaurant, spending £1,450, but how did she atone for her over-the-top spending? Did she get in that ball that that man walked home in? She said that she had decided to give back to the universe by donating four bags of bras to charity. 
Does the universe wear bras? <laughs> Do you think the universe has just been walking around with no bra on all this yeah. time? Yeah. <laughs> Salt Bay's been pilloried. Oh, yes. It's really been pilloried. And what Salt Bay got to do now? He's had to go to Saudi Arabia. Yes, they like someone who's handy with a knife. <laughs> <laughs> and he's hiring people for £12 an hour. But what can you get for £12.50 from the absolute bar and bistro in Bolton? Oh. <laughs> is it um is it a piece of steak that's been shoved in a rusty drain pipe for four months? <laughs> you Double can get rust. That. You can get that, but you can also get a gold leaf pork pie. <laughs> Twelve pounds fifty. It does look like you haven't taken the wrapper off, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> this is the news that a Knightsbridge restaurant run by Salt Bay serves a gold wrapped tomahawk steak costing nearly fifteen hundred pounds. Oh. It's paying its chef just twelve pounds an hour. That may not sound much, but it isn't peanuts. Peanuts are <laughs> £17. <laughs> <laughs> Which means at the end of this round, it's... Paul and Andy have four, Ian and Roisin only have three. No! Oh. 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 It's happening. Time now for the Missing Words round, which this week oh. features as its guest publication, The Proper Mustard the newsletter of the National Mustard Museum. You've probably got an old one at the back of the kitchen cupboard. <laughs> and we start with doctors concerned about use of hula hoops to treat what? To treat allergies to wheaty holes. The answer is COVID. <laughs> I was going to say that, but I wasn't sure it was funny. Doctors are becoming increasingly concerned about miracle COVID cures touted on social media, including eating lots of hula hoops. To be fair, the heavily salted corn starch ring has been proved to be more effective than the protective ring Matt Hancock put around care homes. <laughs> oh. Next, mustard museum creator deems mayonnaise what? Devil sauce. Yeah. Beelzebub's topping. <laughs> Satan salad cream. <laughs> no, a gateway condiment. If you don't start a condiment business with yeah. the Elzebub stopping on, yeah. then you hate money. Well, I've, <laughs> I've got a lorry load of it in Phoenix Day waiting to be delivered. <laughs> <laughs> the piece begins. We often badmouth ketchup, but a reader asks, what about mayonnaise? And I ask, a reader? <laughs> <laughs> Next, what becomes first what to visit Mustard Museum? Mm -hmm. Horse. A horse becomes the first horse. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not right. The answer is Alan Mustard, ambassador to Turkmenistan. <laughs> Alan Mustard was invited to the Mustard Museum, no doubt because of his name. Let's hope other museums follow suit, as that'll be great news for my mate, Keith Natural History. <laughs> Here is a lot Alan more Mustard. work for Olivia Coleman. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. Here is Alan Mustard with a curator. Mr Mustard also brought his wife along. We do have a picture of Mrs Mustard, but we can't show it to you. It's too grainy. Next. <laughs> Next. Sometimes you've just got to move on quick. Quick. That's the other thing is fine. <laughs> Next. Angela Merkel given what as a parting gift from the EU? Oh, I know this. This is Germany. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a comb. It's a parting gift, you see. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's good. Hey. Very good. Thank you very much for the groan. When you see that in your Christmas cracker this year, you heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> a glass paperweight. Oh. After right. 16 years of service, Angela Merkel was given a glass paperweight as a goodbye gift. The paperweight was described as the space egg. Apparently, Mrs Merkel was delighted until she realised it was from the Gwyneth Paltrow collection. <laughs> <laughs> Next, Saudi Arabia announces plans for what theme park? Oil. Yes. Is it? Yes, it is. Oil-themed oh. park. The theme park should be completed by 2030 and will include an underwater restaurant, <laughs> which, the way things are going, won't be much of a novelty by then. <laughs> uh, next, 2021, National Mustard Day was the very first what? National Mustard Day. Yes. Mm. Yes. Yes! Yes! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It was the very first international mustard day. No, you see, he ever. said National Mustard Day. Oh, okay. Don't, Here we go. Don't let them have it, Ian. Next, <laughs> woman organises fridge like a library and what? Does she, does she open the door and say, shh? <laughs> <laughs> Arranges cheeses alphabetically. You are too close. She files food neatly into ring binders. What? Yes. 
It's a kind of sandwich binder, or to use its street name, mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. The time <laughs> is the key component. Here, I don't know how much time to give that one. It could be months, Andy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here is her fridge. How are you meant to graze looking at those? <laughs> That's, is that important? <laughs> of course, a fridge. You open the door and you want them to... It, everything should be luring to you. That's like admin. <laughs> uh, I like the idea of your fridge. It's, it's full of fantastic things. Oh, yeah. Like Shangri-La. Oh, it's, li it's absolute chaos in there. It's like Narnia, but for food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's got dr sandwiches, drinks, meat. And uh, I hate the word meat as a sort of overall thing. It's as always a, a bad sign. As a category. Yeah, you just... There's different... If you just say, oh, we have something with meat in it, you're like, oh. That's the first section I go to in the library. <laughs> 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 what books on meat do you have? <laughs> Next, the Queen is set to accept what from what to mark her 70-year reign. Queen is set to accept guilty verdict for Andrew from <laughs> America. <laughs> no. No. The answer is a commemorative lamppost uh, from Parliament. So um, where's she going to put the lamppost? She's got corgis, hasn't she? She's got a lot of... <laughs> <laughs> Some MPs have called the lamppost a strange choice of gift, but I reckon as soon as she opens it, her little face will light up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So, the final scores are... Paul and Andy have six. Ian and Roisin languished oh, behind goodness. with four. Well done. Yes, well done. But is, is, four... is there no, no, no right of appeal? No. Done. We just have to take this, do we? Yeah. 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 But I've got 17 people I'd like to bring in. <laughs> take it up over the next two years. <laughs> but before we go, there's just time for the caption competition. <laughs> when you say this wine is full body, do not take it the piss body, John. <laughs> <laughs> On which note, we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Roisin Connerty, Paul Merson and Andy Hamilton, and I leave you with news. At Dover, the government go to increasingly desperate measures to keep lorry drivers in the country. <laughs> <laughs> in Istanbul, the Rock, Paper, Scissors World Championships throws up a real grudge match. <laughs> Is that Wayne Rooney? <laughs> and hen party in Gloucester realise there's been a booking mix-up when the stripper arrives. <laughs> <laughs> Good night.